Hello, everyone! And welcome to part 2.5 of my Pokemon DS hacking tutorials, which is coming out only five years after part two, where back then I was under the impression that the only way to edit out larger trainer sprites was to work with that puzzle looking RGCN file with a color pattern like this. While this method helped me with my sprite editing, it is a bit tedious, especially if you have a large number of sprites to do. But since making the hacking discord, I've been taught some more advanced tricks and it's high time I show you how to hopefully avoid having to use these color patterns when possible. Now, part of what took me so long to show this process is that it can be a bit finicky. It didn't actually completely work for me until last year when I stumbled upon a random fix which made me feel all smart, but then I never ended up hearing about anyone else ever running into this same issue. So I ended up writing a Google Doc with these steps on them and had it passed around in the Discord for people to try. These steps seem to have been successfully helping people for the past year, so I feel pretty comfortable finally making this video on these steps. However, if you do end up having any issues with them, you can either come by the Discord and let us know, or try the steps I show in part two. Those still work. But okay, with all that, let's get into it. Firstly, these steps seem to only work on newer versions of Tink. So I recommend using version 0.92, which I did include in the zip file you can download from the two links in the description. All right, so open up Tink. Where I'll browse to my ROM and double click it. As usual, I'm going to stick to a Platinum ROM for consistency. However, if you want to know how to find sprites in other ROMs like Heart Gold, Soul Silver, you can find this link in the zip folder that will take you to a known sprite location Google Doc that we've been writing in the Discord. That should point you in the right direction, no matter which Pokemon DS ROM you're trying to edit. But okay, for my example today, I'm going to edit the male trainer backspray, which is where they toss in the Pokeball at the start of a battle. So in Platinum, that's in Poke Tool, Trainer Graphic, Trainer Back Graphic, which I need to unpack. And for the male sprite, it's made with these top files here. Where first, I need to double click the palette, then the RGCN, and then I can click View, which will load that puzzle image I was showing in part two. But now we can go one step beyond. Where I can now click the RECM beneath it and click view again. And voila, we can see the sprite all put together. Where this is the first frame, and I can see the rest of them by scrolling this pick list here. Where now our goal will be to replace each of these frames. Where generally, we'll start by exporting them. Where the first thing you want to do is unclick the transparency box here. So we actually get the background of the sprite to show up. And we'll just start back at the top of the list and click export. I'm gonna store mine in this RECN test folder and in here. And I can keep doing that for each frame underneath it. And okay, they should now be right here. And now to seem a little better, let me open one in a sprite. Like so. Uh, skip. There we go. So from this stage, things are pretty much the same. You still want to limit this sprite to 16 colors, including the background. So just so you know, this transparency box in the palette is not one of those 16 colors. You can still have a full 16 set over here. And you may have noticed the very large transparent box around the sprite. And while it is a little odd, you do want to make sure to keep this transparent box around your edited sprites as well. And also keep the back end of your sprite the same size as well, which is exactly what I did for my edited sprites 
like this one. Skip. Just like so. And this alone here should be enough. You should not need to actually move these color modes into index. So you don't have to worry about indexing yet for these. I don't think it'll break anything if you do, but you can leave that part out if need be. And okay. Once you have all eight of your edited frames like I do here, then you're all set to start importing them into Tink. Where to do so, we just scroll back up to the top of this bank list. And I want to set the palette import options to replace palette and click import. I want to go up a level and pick my first frame here and open. And bam! Uh, well, mostly bam. Here is where we get into that finickiness I mentioned in the beginning. This glitch spot here is part of the issue that I always ran into when trying to teach myself how to edit the RECN files. But now I finally know better. All you actually need to do to fix this is to now change the palette option to swap to original palette and then just import the frame a second time. Like that. And now it just looks a lot better. What's happening here is that when I used that replace palette option before, the colors of my sprite overrode the colors of this palette file here. Which we can see if I double click it. Which if I view it, you can see them right here. So when I come back to the RECN, when I imported the second time, I changed things to pull from the palette instead, and this seems to work better for Tink. Where I don't know exactly why, but at least it works. Okay, now, now that we're past that, I can import frame number two. And then all the ones down from there. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, and eight. And voila, they are all in there. No pattern needed. Now, most of you will probably have an easy time inserting my sprites like I just did. However, before importing your sprites, there's one important detail you want to consider. As I said before, when I imported my first sprite using the replace color option, the colors of that first frame were applied to the palette. However, if that first frame doesn't display some of the colors some of the later frames use, then those missing colors will be removed from those later frames when you import them. So the first frame that you want to import is actually a frame that displays all the colors used by your other frames. For example, if my character had a large red logo on the front of his shirt, that isn't shown until we get to this frame here, where his chest turns towards the camera, then this is the frame I'd want to import first instead. Also, for those of you who are more familiar with how palettes work, I should mention that Tink always creates its own palette. That means like if you try to come into a sprite and manually add colors that aren't used on this sprite here into the palette, that won't actually work because when the first sprite comes into Tink, it's just going to take the colors it can see at that time. So the frame that you pick the first import needs to show those colors for this to work correctly. However, no matter what, if this does not cooperate with you and there are still some colors missing from the palette, you can use a tool called Console Tool to edit the palette directly. Most of you should never need to go this far, but if you need to learn how to use that, you can check out episode 14 to learn about Console Tool. But okay, okay. So here we are. And now my sprite is inserted into Tink. But wait! Enhance! My pants are clear! Oh. Yes! <laughs> and now we get into the second issue that delayed me from making an episode on editing the RECN. For some reason, the color of my character's pants would always get lost when I imported them. No matter how many times I tried the workaround I just showed you earlier. Since I didn't know why, I was worried that this issue would hit other people as well, and that we wouldn't have any idea how to fix it. But that's when last year I stumbled into a fix that worked for me. Where in the end, all I had to do was change the palette threshold here to the highest number it can hold, which is 442. Or now if I scroll back to the top, 
and changes back to replace palette, I can try to import again. Where, okay, okay, we're back to the first problem again. <laughs> so I change it back to swap to original palette, import again, and now the sprite is okay. <laughs> this is why in the beginning I said this was a little finicky. <laughs> but okay, now that this first frame looks good, I should be able to insert the rest again as well. So I'll come down here, we can see the pants are clear, I import. And there we are. We're done to this one. Import. Number three here. Four. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come down again. Oh, and you also can see on these that I have a little bit of my neck also getting fixed by this. So I do import. One, two, three, seven. There we go. Fix that spot right there. And one last one here. There we go. And okay. Now it is good. Ironically, this is the issue I mentioned at the start that no one else in the server has also mentioned seeing. So it's entirely possible that I might be the only one to ever see this. But at least now, if there is some other poor unfortunate soul who also sees this, hopefully this will help them as well. But okay, now we are done. So all that is left now is to pack the narc to commit my changes. Where I just click the narc name back at the top and click pack. This is the step into you always want to remember to do, because if you don't pack the narc when you're done, and you just go immediately and save a new ROM, then that new ROM won't actually have your changes in it. So always remember to pack your narcs when you're done. And that's it! Hopefully now the patterns have been defeated. But at the very least, if these steps give you any trouble, you can still use those patterns to edit the sprites. Those steps will still work. Also, as I mentioned, the written version of this tutorial existed for a year before today. Videos can take a good while to make as you've seen with some of the gaps in the channel. So if you want to stay more up to date on new hacking methods, I recommend coming by the Discord with the link in the description. That is the uh, hip inhabitant place where you can learn new things more quickly. Like I said, that Discord has now grown so large that it's teaching me things to put into videos now. <laughs> but okay, I wish you all a good day from here and hopefully I'll see you in another video very soon. Good night everybody!